thank you for having me today. I am the Reverend Ronette Comfort Butler, and I am the new facilitator for clergy care for the Penn Central Conference, and it is an honor to be with you today. Today I would like to speak about a topic that has been really heavy on my heart and in my mind as we have waded the waters of this pandemic, and that is grief. Now we all know the five stages of grief, and we all know them in the traditional manner. However, when we are grieving in this time of the pandemic, we are grieving differently. And so today I would like to take this opportunity to go through those five stages in the traditional form and then talk about how they are affecting us in the pandemic form. And I will refer to my notes uh, periodically because I want to be mindful of what I am telling you is truth and I also want to be mindful of the time spent telling you I don't want to hold you for a long period of time. So first I'd like to go over denial which is usually the first stage of um, grief. Denial in the traditional uh, sense of the word is you know thinking about if I would have done this I could have done that. When we are talking about it in traditional forms, we're talking about death, we're talking about illness, we're talking about loss. So in death, we may say, I really wish I could have been with that person. And if I would have been there, maybe things would have been differently. Or if I would have gone to the doctor sooner, maybe I would not be dealing with this illness. Or maybe if I would have paid attention more to my loved one, they could have been diagnosed in a different way. In the pandemic form of it, it's a little different because we're thinking of if I could have listened to somebody who would have told me something um, in truth, maybe I could have dealt with this differently, or maybe I should have dealt with this differently with my church or with my patients. Maybe if I could have um, known a little more about what COVID-19 is, maybe I could have dealt with it differently. Now the second part of grief in the traditional form is anger. And so we become angry at maybe even the person who died. We become angry that we couldn't have been there with them. Or maybe we become angry because they gave up or they died. Or we think that they gave up. Or maybe they didn't want to go through the traditional chemotherapy or radiation and they chose not to do that. And maybe we're angry with them for that. I remember when my grandmother died, I was very angry at her for a while because she didn't recognize me because she had Alzheimer's. And so I didn't understand why she couldn't recognize me and I became angry with her. And I became angry with her because in my mind, I never thought that she would die. I, as unrealistic as that is, I was her granddaughter. And so I just blocked that out. But in the pandemic form of it, we may become angry because we're locked behind our closed doors and our windows like the people in the upper room. And we can't come out and we can't go to the grocery store in the traditional manner. And we can't go with, you know, to the mall just because we want to. We can't go up to our neighbors and talk in a normal distance. We have to stay six feet away. And we can't go to church and worship in the way we are used to worshiping. So this becomes problematic for us. And we become angry that we, now we have to wear gloves and masks to go outside into the grocery store. And we're angry that we can't pick up the products that we want to pick up because the shelves are empty. And we're angry that why, why are we having this? Why are we put behind our you know, doors of our house? Why can't we live our lives in the way we want to live? Now the third stage is bargaining. And bargaining is kind of unique because... We bargain with God when we're in the traditional state. We bargain that, you know, God, please, 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 I'll do anything. You know, just let that person be okay or let this disease go away from me. We've all done it. And in the pandemic stage, we may find ourselves doing the same thing, but we might be bargaining not only to God, but we might be bargaining to our um, ourselves and saying, well, if we just kind of wade this out a little bit longer, it'll go away and we'll be fine. And so we bargain this a little differently. Now in the fourth stage is depression. And I'd like to talk about two, two forms of depression or two types. And the first is a reaction to the practical implications of loss. 
uh, sadness, a deep paralyzing sadness that we know when somebody dies or when we have a disease that we are going through. Um, I remember when I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, I became very depressed that I had this disease that was going to plague me for the rest of my life. And how would I wade these waters through this disease? So it, it became a little bit of a depression that I was not, quote, normal anymore, that I had to deal with this disease. Now, the second is a more subtle. It's needing that tenderness, that hug, that uh, embrace. And in the traditional sense, we might need it and we can go get it. But in the pandemic, we can't go out and get a hug if we want a hug. We can't embrace the person that we feel needs that hug or ourselves need that hug because that hug or that handshake or that just touching of that person may cause us to become ill. And so it may cost us our lives. And so it's very different in the pandemic than it is in the traditional. In the traditional, we can go hug somebody. You know, I need a hug. Please hug me. But in the pandemic, we don't have that option or that opportunity. And so that's where it differs. In the last stage is acceptance. And in, there is a little piece of the acceptance that I want to share with you that not everybody accepts you know, what they're going through in the traditional manner. It's not an overjoy or a party. And maybe it is in the traditional sense. In the pandemic, it might be a breath. <sighs> okay, we've gotten through this. And yes, it was terrible and it was hard. But now we're going back to a different life. So how do we wade those waters of a new life, not our normal life? in the sense that we are used to? How do we go back to church in a different sense? Do we have to sanitize our pews every time? Do we have to um, pass the plate differently because everybody's touching it? Are we able to hug each other during the passing of the peace, which I know at my church is non-negotiable, but it may have to be. So that may be our new form of acceptance. And so during this pandemic, we are accepting things differently. It may not be joyful. It may just be a new normal. And so what I also want to talk about is that we may be going through these stages of grief differently. We may be reacting to them very differently. And we may be going through the stages differently. My number one stage might be depression. My number two stage may be denial. You don't have to go through them step one, step two, step three, because we're all different and we all grieve differently. And I want you to let yourself or allow yourself that grace to go through them differently and to know that you may be experiencing things that other people may not be experiencing. And guess what? That's okay. So today I want to talk before we end about one more thing, and that is what do we do once we've gone through these stages of of denial. How do we handle the new normal? Or what can we do as we go through these stages of depression? One of the things that I would like to talk about quickly is that we can go outside if we're able, if it's nice out, and we can take a walk. That builds your endorphins. You can exercise. That builds endorphins and making you feel more joy. My biggest fear of a feeling of joy is when I am able to sit in the sun for just 10 minutes. That vitamin D and that sunshine just rejuvenates me in ways that I can't even explain, but it helps me. Um, we can take time to do things that we haven't done in a long time. For example, for me, I draw. I was an art teacher once upon a time, and I love to draw, but I haven't had time to draw in a very long time. And I am sitting down now, and I'm drawing, and I'm sketching and doing the things that I love to do. Or writing, writing in a journal, and just letting it all go. Um, we can do these very simply. It doesn't have to be something that is just well thought out. Simply lighting a candle and sitting with your eyes closed and just breathing. And not breathing from our bronchioles, but breathing from our diaphragms. If we ever looked at a baby breathing and their little bellies go in and out, that's the way you should breathe when you are in this sense of peace. And so today, I hope that you can take something from what I've said um, whether you're going through grief in the traditional 
one, two, three, four, five, or whether you're all out of order and discombobulated, it's okay. We all go through it, and we all go through it in our own ways. And so I want to leave you with something that I've been really concentrating on, and that is one of the Beatitudes, and that is, Blessed are the mourning, for they are to be comforted. And yes, mourning and grief are two different things. One is experienced um, in one way, and one is experienced in another way. But we are experiencing them in the way that we know how. And so for me to dive into the scriptures and to read that, I feel as though in my mourning state, in my grief, that I will feel comfort. And so I hope that you too can take something out of this and feel comfort as well. Peace be with all of you.